Michael Moore needs to shut his fat mouth. Because honestly, these white Christians might need to airdrop him into Palestine. And let's see how long he lasts then. I bet you he's going to come crawling back to these white Christians to come save him. Um, I guess the hatred and finger pointing that goes around on a daily basis um, doesn't really change that much. Um, nobody takes blame or they blame the wrong people. And honestly, I don't think it changes much even if you are some washed up director of terrible documentary movies. Um, so we have a clip through MSNBC and the has been known as Michael Moore. Before we get into the video, I need to tell you a secret. I need you to hit the like and the subscribe button. I need to fight against the YouTube algorithm. Because I'm on the road to 1,000. I'm going to need all the help I can get. Let's get into it. What is the crime? Because according to my knowledge of history, um, uh, the enemies of Israel who have been persecuted, the Israelis, the, the, the Jewish people of this world have been persecuted for 5,000 years. But for the last 2,000 years, most of the persecution has come from white European-centric Christians. That's been your enemy. No Palestinian helped to build Auschwitz. No Palestinian stood on the docks of New York City when boatloads of Jewish refugee, refugees trying to escape the Holocaust came here to be protected by this country and were turned away at the docks in New York and sent back to Germany to die. No Palestinian did that. No Palestinian ran the Spanish Inquisition. Your enemy, your enemy is not the Palestinian people. It is white Christian European uh, uh, people who have been slaughtering Jews for the last 2,000 years. And let's just call it for what it is. But why are they in an open air prison? Why are 2 million of them in an open air prison? So his, his theory is basically, I mean, it's a dumb one, saying that people in the Middle East that never hated Jews or, or wanted to, to, to hurt Jews in the last 2,000 years, because his, his excuse is that white Europeans have been more successful at it. That's that's really what the claim is. They've just been more successful. Um, to say that that the, the real enemy is the white, uh, white European Christians. Well, guess what? Those same white Christians are the ones who came and stopped the people in Auschwitz. So truthfully, Michael Moore needs to shut his fat mouth. Because honestly, these white Christians might need to airdrop him into Palestine. And let's see how long he lasts then. I bet you he's going to come crawling back to these white Christians to come save him. See, this is how stupid and, and trash Michael Moore is. Michael Moore is just trash. His movies are trash. His opinions are trash. Hell, MSNBC is trash. The fact that he has this opinion, he's just trying to make a mark. He's trying to get clicks. It's clickbait, really, at this point. Or maybe he does feel this way. Maybe he's that stupid that he that he doesn't realize that the only thing stopping, you know, the Palestinian horde from killing Jews, including him, is the white Christians. Doesn't he understand that? How did you think, where did you think Israel got all the weapons from? These so-called, you know, horrible white Christians. You know, they armed the Jewish people with technology and, and weaponry to, 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 to keep them alive. But they're horrible. They're the real enemy. That this is how stupid Michael Moore is. And MSNBC allows this on here without even fact-checking him. Without even pushing back on it. it. It's ridiculous. Are there white people, or well, I mean, there's everybody, but are there white people that like, praise Hitler and the things that he done? Sure. Absolutely. Well, there's everybody. Because our next clip is a Palestinian man praising Hitler. Loves it. Th th thinks he's, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. So let's check that out. What do you think of Hitler? My mind is a hero. Why? He's a very strong uh, man. Okay. He uh, has a very uh, impressive character. Character. Okay. Uh, about uh, what I read uh, about him, he is very. Sorry. Arabic. Yeah, <laughs> Look, 
this Palestinian man thinks uh, Hitler was a hero. He has great character. He even brought a, uh, somebody else in to, to translate for him. The translator probably thinks this too. But no, the, Michael Moore, you know, dumbass Michael Moore thinks uh, it, it's just the white Christians that, that want Jew all the Jews dead. We're the ones who made sure that they survived. Who do you think helped, you know, push the Jewish people into Israel after 48? Huh? Who, who do you think helped settle Israel once more for the Jewish people? It wasn't the Palestinians that did that. What do you think the white Christians right now are, are going against the Jews? No, he must be an idiot. Jewish people have more control in our government than your average citizen. I mean, literally, you will be thrown off the internet if you talk bad about Jewish people. You'll have your whole entire career wasted and, and just put into the trash can. Doesn't he understand that these white Christians are the ones that are actually protecting it? I hope Michael Moore sees this. I just want to point out, Michael, you're a dummy. You must be stupid if you think that white Christians are the actual enemy of Jewish people. Because we're, we're under attack too. Do you think us white Christians, we're the enemy of the Palestinian people? A lot of people in the Middle East. And they tear down our flags and we allow it. We allow them to destroy our, our, our property and, and take down our flag but raise their own. And if you don't blame me, I have the evidence to prove it. What the crazy part is, they people want you to feel guilty. I'm not gonna feel guilty that I'm white. I, cause I can't change it. That is, I, I wouldn't expect somebody Jewish to feel guilty because they were Jewish, or if they were black, I don't feel, want them to feel guilty, or, or whatever, whoever they were. Don't feel guilty for who you are. I can't. I mean, literally, there's commercials of, of people who, who write crap on their face and talk about their white guilt. And how bad it is. I didn't create this world. I didn't create myself. If you don't like the fact that I'm white, blame God. I didn't do it. I just exist. And it sounds like today that there's this this talk that seems to be okay in the mainstream about you know white people not existing. How we are going to exterminate white people because that, in my estimation, is the only conclusion I have come to. We have to exterminate white people off of the face of the planet to solve this problem. I will. I refuse to feel guilty or feel bad that I'm white. I should never, and nobody should ever feel bad that they're white. And, and there, if you haven't seen the commercial, I'm, I'm going to show you what this commercial of, of white guilt actually looks like. What do you mean we're lucky to be white? It's not luck. It's privilege. We're privileged that people see us, not a color. Privilege that we don't get stared at when we walk into the room. Privilege that we don't get followed by security when we go shopping. Or pulled over when we're in the wrong neighborhood. We're privileged because society was set up for us and our silence keeps it in place. We're privileged and that's unfair. See that nonsense? That's craziness, right? It's nuts to actually believe that that's how they actually want us to feel. To feel bad as if I created the system. I did not. I don't think people understand or they can't get it through their head. Yeah, the United States of America is a white country. They were my, white majority. To say that the system was set up for white people, no, it was just set up by white people. It wasn't for white people. Because you can't name one right today that I have that somebody else doesn't. Without trying to name something that's just how you feel. Get out of your feelings, right? A name another people throughout the history of mankind who has killed their own people on the behalf of another race. White people is the only one who did that. White people ended slavery. White people ended uh, Jim Crow. White people ended civil rights or began the civil rights movement. White people have said and did things that no other race of people would ever do, have never done in the history of mankind. Would anybody else in their right mind or any race of people ever share their country? And instead of, you know, we, we, we are so caught up and worried about this woke nonsense of, you know, this, this fantastical, fictional hate that everybody's supposed to have in their heart. 
uh, and we ignore some of the biggest problems. I mean, even in our military now, they're sending out their, their best and brightest trans soldiers to talk about how great inclusiveness is. And I'm going to show you a clip of, of one of our soldiers uh, that, that you're going to have to ask yourself the question. I, I really want you to pay attention to what this person is saying. They're going to say, you know, how great inclusiveness is for the military really is, right? This is how great inclusiveness is, but they never tell you how. They go on to tell their, their nonsensical story, but that's it. So let's take a look at this clip and come right back. Inclusion across all groups in the military. Come back tomorrow morning for the first 10 minutes and then, then run away. I'm gonna focus a little bit more today on my story and that of transgender service members and how and why that fits into the picture of why inclusion matters. Why does it matter to us as a military? Why is it not a negative that some people may believe it to be? And how do we as leaders use it to enhance mission accomplishment? But I wanna start here. This was less than two years ago, two days after a 10 hour surgery that opened me up from here to here and washed out all my insides with chemotherapy after removing several organs. I was terrified. This was, as I said, this was two days later and I was still terrified. Not that I was gonna die, which was a, certainly a, a consideration before the surgery, but that I'd never put the uniform back on again. All of us come into the service knowing there will be a day we take the uniform off for the final time. We hope that it is on our terms. In many cases, it's not. That is the cost of service. But we want to get to that day where it is our choice whether or not we take this uniform off. And I did not know that I would be healthy enough to ever put it on again. But there is a reason that I wanted to stay that I wanted to be part of this military service. And I hope by the end of what we get through today, you'll realize exactly what that is. Uh, talking about how inclusion across the military has, has gr is great appeal. But it, it, it's, it's, is this what really matters? Is this gonna raise the recruitment numbers? How many people do you think are gonna go, oh, you, you're good with men who call themselves women? And vice versa in the military. Let me go join the military now. Because that's that's the thing that we need to worry about. Sure. Yeah, don't don't worry about military readiness. Worry about pronouns and and what's between people's legs and not how how you know the merit of that person are they physically and mentally fit to do the job and to have that position. No, no, no. You worry what they classify themselves as, what category they put, what their pronouns are how they identify, what is their identity? Are you being inclusive? Because that's the things that matter, everybody. That's, remember, when it comes to the military and, and waging war, being inclusive is what matters. It's nonsense. Michael Moore is nonsense. This is nonsense. Uh, feeling guilty about who you are, regardless of who that person is, that's, that's a bunch of bull. So, I don't know how you feel. Let me know how you feel in the comments. Um, enjoy the content. Give me a like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. I usually upload on the daily. Check out my playlist, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.